Hello, my name is Mary Lurie. I am minister at Melville United Church in Fergus, and I am pleased that you could get, join with us. We gather in community. Even though we cannot gather physically together, we gather by these means, printed or video services. We share in our community of faith in this way. This service is prepared for Easter morning. Easter is the import, most important day in the Christian tradition. Without the resurrection, no matter how it may have happened, our Christian tradition loses its foundation. And that foundation is this man Jesus, whom we call the Christ, who came to model a different way of being. He came to teach the law of God's love that includes all people and, in fact, all of creation. He came to offer a message that lives beyond death and the destruction that this world offers. He came to offer us new life and life in abundance. And so we celebrate that message today. During Friday's Good Friday service, we ended by snuffing out the candle. Today, the flame is burning bright. Now, life has defeated death. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And I light the candle. You can barely see the flame there, but it says here. There's the candle. And we light this candle in the name of God who creates light, in the name of the Christ who loves light, and in the name of the Spirit, who is the fire of life. Our gathering words today, our centering words, are, were written by Nikos Kazantzakis. I'm not sure if I say that right, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. He wrote, I said to the almond tree, speak to me of God. And the almond tree blossomed. It speaks to me of new life. I invite you now into a time of worship, a time for recognizing and acknowledging the still small voice within, a time to listen and reflect on the issues of the day, a time to find calm and hope and inspiration possibly. And today we celebrate new life and resurrection. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come, let us worship together. Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. All creation join to say, hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high, hallelujah. Sing, O heavens and earth, reply, Love's redeeming work is done, hallelujah. Fought the fight, the battle won, hallelujah. Lo, our sun's eclipse is o'er, hallelujah. Lo, he dwells on earth no more, Hail the Lord of earth and heaven, Alleluia. Praise to you by both be given, Alleluia. Every knee to you shall bow, Alleluia. Risen Christ triumphant now, I sure do miss the organ, don't you? Anyway, I hope you don't mind me singing for you. Let us pray. Great God of light, you come to us while it is deep as night. God of life, you overcome the power of death. Alleluia. 
We come from the shadows to stand in your presence unafraid. Alleluia. Fill our hearts with joy on this day of resurrection. Alleluia. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of John, reading chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so she ran off to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and told them, The rabbi has been taken from the tomb. We don't know where they have put Jesus. At that, Peter and the other disciples started out toward the tomb. They were running side by side, but then the other disciple overtook Peter and reached the tomb first. He didn't enter, but bent down to peer in and saw the linen wrappings lying on the ground. Then Simon Peter arrived and entered the tomb. He observed the linens wrap, linens, linen wrappings on the ground and saw the piece of cloth that had covered Jesus' head, lying not with the wrappings, but rolled up in a piece by itself. Then the disciple who had arrived first at the tomb went in. He saw and believed. As yet they didn't understand the scripture that Jesus was to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Meanwhile, Mary stood weeping beside the tomb. Even as she wept, she stopped to peer inside, and there she saw two angels dressed in white, dazzling white robes. One was seated at the head and the other at the foot of the place where Jesus' body had been. They asked her, Why are you weeping? She answered them, Because they've taken away my rabbi, and I don't know where they have put the body. No sooner had she said this than she turned around and caught sight of Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. He asked her, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? She supposed it was the gardener, so she said, Please, if you're the one who carried Jesus away, tell me. Tell me where you've laid the body, and I will take it away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus then said, Don't hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Abba God. Rather, go to the sisters and brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Abba and to your Abba, my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went to the disciples. I've seen the teacher, she announced. Then she reported what he had said to her. May God bless you our understanding these words of wisdom. If we pay attention to the news, even on a semi-regular basis, never mind at times like these, it can be easy enough for us to live as though every day were Good Friday. Living our call as Christians to be an Easter people can seem foolish, if not impossible. Today's reading reminds us, however, that we are not the first ones to face this hurdle and that we can learn, as so many before us, to see the presence of the living God right before us. From ancient times, human nature doesn't seem to have changed much. We are a curious species trying to understand the world in which we live. Often, though, we try to fit our understandings into the framework of our human senses and collective memories. The scriptures call us to broader views. The story of the evolution of human spirituality or our relationship with great mystery, which is what our Bible stories are, sets our human experience against the larger picture of the world beyond the physical being. In other words, it is telling us that there's more to human beings than a living, breathing body. Contained within that body is our true selves, 
our spirit. The resurrection story of the story of Easter is the foundational story for our Christian tradition. Without it, some say, all else fell, falls apart. It is also one of the hardest events to get our heads around, one of the hardest things to understand or accept. There are many theories as to what the event actually was. The theories range from the traditional and very literal interpretation that the resurrection was a historical fact, that Jesus was raised physically from the dead, that his corpse was resuscitated somehow, to the view that the disciples, what the disciples saw was a deeper meaning to the life of the teacher whom they had loved and followed, and that he rose to life in them as they took up his cause and continued the work that he had started. I don't know how the resurrection happened. I wasn't there. I can't say positively what did happen. It is just as puzzling to me as it is to you or to anyone. And I could go into a big long harangue about what all the theologians say, but it really, I really don't think that would be very helpful for you. So let me say a bit about what I do think. I believe that there had to be a, a life-changing event of some kind. I believe that something momentous must have happened to infuse those disciples with the overwhelming desire to confirm and continue the work that Jesus had begun. And considering life at the time and what had happened to Jesus, it had to be something extraordinary or it would never have overcome their fear and given them the courage to continue living and teaching the way in a new way. Whatever actually happened or didn't happen, I've come to accept the fact that resurrection does happen, and it happens all the time. I think resur resurrection is foundational, not only to our Christian religion, but to our very lives here on this earth. I think it is the foundational way that God works. I believe that with the love of God, there is no death from which new life cannot spring. And further to that, there is no resurrection, no new life without death. For something new to begin, something else must die. It seems to me that God's foundational story is the story of life and death. Death is part of life, as the saying goes. But it isn't all there is to the story. It isn't even the end of the story, as we so often like to believe. Death is a natural and necessary part of life. An end is always a beginning, is another old adage that is so very true. The resurrection story of the Bible begins with Good Friday. Without the crucifixion, there would be no Easter morning. Without the death, there would be no new life. It is the way of life, isn't it? New life is born, lives, and dies. Out of that death comes more new life in its turn. It is the way of life, the way of God, if you will. The problem comes when we get stuck in the dying part. Sometimes we forget to look for the new life that is possible. Sometimes we don't see it for looking at it. Sometimes our tears and our pain blind us to the possibilities that are right in front of us. Like Mary, who didn't recognize her beloved teacher standing there. She was blinded by her tears and by her assumptions about what had happened. It was only as he spoke her name that she began to realize she was not alone and that maybe there was a different explanation for what seemed so obvious to her. As he gently spoke to her, she was drawn out of her grief to see him in the dawning light of the new day. So often it is through our tears that we experience the risen Christ that we find new life. The one who loves us, 
holds us or stands with us as we mourn our losses is grieving with us. He gently leads us, takes us by the hand and helps us move beyond our tears into the joy of a new day. This is what resurrection is. The dawn after the night, the sunshine after the storm, the joy after the sorrow, the new life that rises out of the cold earth every spring, the flower that emerges from the bulb. We are surrounded by resurrection. We are surrounded by new life. That is God's message to us in the story of the Christ. That new life is possible even out of the most dire of circumstances. If we can remember that in our darkest hours, if we can hold on to the promise of new life that God offers us, if we can listen to love's voice calling through our tears, then we will have grasped the meaning of resurrection. The operative word here is hope. So I figure it doesn't really matter what one thinks of the resurrection story or what theory one accepts. What matters is how we experience and embrace the fact that God's love, with God's love, new life will rise out of death. That with God's love, resurrection happens. And because of that, God truly has defeated death. It is never the end of the story. Thanks be to God. Amen. So as we prepare our hearts and minds now to enter into a time of prayer, I invite you to sit comfortably and quietly for a moment. Breathe deeply a few times, paying particular attention to your breath as it moves in and through your nostrils and fills your lungs. Picture your breath as light entering your body and filling it with love and relaxation. Then when you exhale, imagine the breath taking away all the tensions, concerns, worries as it leaves your body. Do this a few times until you feel relaxed and then we will move into the prayer time. Relax. Let us pray. God of new life, we give thanks for this Easter day. Today the world is made new. Today the story is stone is rolled away. Today we hear the songs of birds and angels giving praise. Today we recognize the sights of life all around us. Life that cannot be held back or destroyed. Life that resists all the powers of death. Life that arises triumphant. We come to celebrate the love which is more powerful than all the powers of this world put together. We come to celebrate because love conquers all. Because love endures all things. Because Christ is risen indeed. We also come to the celebration aware of the mistakes that we humans make, and we give thanks for the forgiveness that is ours. We know that with spirit, new life is always possible. With spirit, we are given the opportunity to begin again and again and again. As we continue to remain in our homes to avoid spreading the COVID-19 virus, may we be reminded that this too will pass. May we be reminded that because we cannot come and go as we please, wherever we want, does not mean we need to sit and be miserable. May we be reminded that outside our door, the wonders of nature and the bursting buds of spring continue. May we be reminded that life will go on, that things will return to normal, and it won't seem to take so long if we can only practice patience. 
And so we pray today for open hearts and open minds, open to possibilities of change, open to possibilities of new perspectives, open to the possibility that there are lessons to be learned, and most of all, open to the joys that can be found if we only look around with loving eyes. We pray today for our brothers and sisters of Millbank Hampstead Pastoral Charge, and for all those who are working and putting themselves at risk to maintain essential services during this time, medical personnel, first responders, grocery and pharmacy workers, personal care workers, civil servants, governing bodies, and so many more. May they find the strength, wisdom, and respite they need to continue their essential roles. And we pray for ourselves, as in a moment of silence we go deep within to offer the prayers of our hearts. Fear cannot drive out your love, great mystery. Anger and hatred cannot separate us from your wondrous love, holy presence. Weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. We offer these and all of our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus the Christ, who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. If you would like to do your part by making a monetary donation to Melville United Church, there are a number of ways to do that. On our website, you will find instructions about donating online through Canada Helps, about making an e-transfer from your bank, about how to call Linda and prearrange PAR or pre-authorized remittance donations, and where to send checks post-dated checks, current checks, they're all welcome. If you wish to do that, that would be most appreciated. And we give our thanks to you and all who continue to contribute so much to making Melville the caring community of faith that it is. We couldn't do it without you. Go now into the rest of your day, aware of the presence of new life continually around you. Go living in the promise of the God who will not abandon us, but whose love endures forever. Go proclaiming the good news. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. A very happy and blessed Easter to all of you. I hope you keep well and healthy and notice new life around you. Bye for now.